Okay, our third keynote speaker over the mor this morning is Shira Ruderman, and she is going to talk about tri-partnership collaborations. We know the scale of the issue that we face is really about cross-partnership and collaboration from many, many sectors. And Shira is going to talk about her experience both from Israel and from America. So a big round of applause, please, for Shira Ruderman. Well, Patrick, to follow you, it's a hard task. And if this is the worst you can do, I am worried about what's the best you can do. So, uh, first of all, I would like just to start by thanking um, Martin and Michael for having me here and acknowledge our um, two important people, Jay Ruderman, the president of the Ruderman Family Foundation, and Galia Granot, my wonderful program officer, and to tell you that my presentation was done by our amazing staff that is visually impaired. So like you said, Patrick, I think technology can break a lot of barriers. So the Ruderman Family Foundation um, is a global international foundation that has a global approach on the issue of inclusion. We believe in a social impact we truly believe in leading by example. We believe that inclusion is not a program, a unit in your business. It's actually a value, a mindset on everyone's mind. Our foundation works in two models, and I will, uh, these models will lead me to the topic of the session today, this morning. Uh, we work in a model that divided two program on the ground, innovative programs, starting amazing pilots and ideas uh, on the ground through grants, which is very known in the world of foundation. But our other arm, which is less known, is actually leading by advocacy, being active, sharing your story, telling your experience out, building the networks, being proactive is crucial because no one, none of us can do anything alone. And this example today of networking and sharing best practice is crucial for the world of inclusion because this is how we can be heard together. This is how we can create social critical numbers on the ground and being an advocate is actually sharing your values, sharing your mindset. In order to create this notion of impact, we truly believe that we have to work in collaborations and partnerships. Now, partnership, we all know, some of us from the business world, some from the nonprofit, some from the government, it's not simple. It takes a lot of mindset to create a partnership. We at the foundation, from our beginning, believe that partnership will make us stronger. Although it's not the easy way, it's the sustainable way for the long run. Now, when we talk about a triangle of partnership, we're talking about the business sector, philanthropy, and government. And why this triangle is worth it and worthwhile to invest in is because no one of us from the foundation's world or the business world can maintain the um, change for the long run on a mass massive scale without the government in it. So if you ask a foundation, what's your, I hope that this will be the answer for most foundations, what's your dream is that whatever you start will remain and stay there for the long run after you stop funding. So one of the ways to make it work for us is to partner with the government and the business sector, of course, but in order to make it successful, there are a few principles that we all have to follow. So we all understand that in the philanthropy business world, we have independence and we can move fast and we are less bureaucratic and we have the privilege to be innovative. We can take the ideas from Cisco or Meitav, Dash is a company in Israel, or any other company and pilot it and try it. But in order to scale it up, I think our best way to go is to partner with the government. And what is important in order to make this successful is to identify each one of the partners, what's their added value? What are we good at? What do we bring at the table? 
none of us bring all of the answers. None of us brings all the solutions. The funder has a role, the business has a role, but the government can help us spread it nationally, internationally, and make this, as I said before, sustainable for the long run. In order to create an impact, we have to follow a few steps. So the steps that we all know from each sector is that, you know, we start small, we scale it up in order to feel that the mass, you know, mass critical number is out there. We want a true leverage implementation that can be done by the government and sensibility for the long run, which is extremely important. All of these factors together create impact. And impact is important because in our impact, we have few circles that we want to have in mind. We have the people with disability, we have the people without disability, we have the society in large, we want to have the ecosystems. So as you said before, you change one person's life is meaningless and important, but it's not enough to create a systematic change in our society. It's not enough to change people's mindset. So next to that, we have to have the other arm, as I mentioned before, which is the advocacy. We're creating partnerships, we're creating impact, we're scaling it up to you know, national, international level, and then if we don't share the best practices, if we don't share the story, I don't think it will be good enough. And again, this example of us sitting here today, it's in order to share our best practices, our knowledge, it's to bring what we know to other places. But in each country, we have a government. And in each country, we have the social philanthropy sector. And we are able to bring them together in order to create this, what I believe, truly impor important and impactful partnership between the private sector to the government. In order to have a successful partnership, it's not enough just to follow the pilot, you know, to the scale up, to the implementation. It's as important, if not, to spend the time to build the partnership itself, not the program, not the initiative, to invest in knowing who you work with, to understand that even the people in the government believe in relationships. It's not enough to say, I'm working with the government. It's really important to invest who they are, what is the mission that they represent? Do we have the same values? Can we work in transparency? Can we put a system in place? It is not for granted to have the private sector working directly with the government. I truly believe that these examples are hard to find. We had an amazing privilege to have this work for us, you know, in the United States, in Massachusetts, and in the state of Israel, and I recognize some of the partners working in the government here today, but you do need to really sit and find the match and the added value. The government, at least from our experience, and I'm talking just about our experience, do understand today that they cannot do it all alone. They do need the private sector. They do need the philanthropists, not just to bring funds which are important for itself, but it's to bring the innovations, it's to bring the ideas, it's to bring the freedom out of the bureaucratic system to try new things, to build and create. And this opportunity of government recognizing the role that the private sector has and the power that philanthropy has giving us philanthropists the opportunity also to partner with the government in order to see what we call leverage, impact, and sustainable to our own models. So, in order to create a solid partnership, there are a few other steps we have to take. And to create a partnership, as I said, we're talking about creating the content for itself, the model, the pilot. It's creating the partnership, the communication, the transparency, the mutual understanding, the recognition of our added values. But there are always, I'm sorry, there are also other steps that we should take, which are more professional gearing and not just about the personal and mindset relationship. They are geared towards creating the methodology of a partnership. So we create a committee together, which again, it's not usual, but it's possible. We create um, a common mission, meaning that we take the mission of the government or the partners 
and we take our mission and bring it together, meaning that we have to understand that there are some things that we bring and some things that we have to compromise or give up in order to create a common ground between the three sectors. And I would say that, you know, exit strategy is extremely important, not just in the business world, it's important in our world, what we call the social change. Because we as funders, as foundations, as businesses cannot stay forever. We recognize the period of time. We know that we have to live in after three, four, five, six years. And the exit strategy is as important to make sure that the partnership and the initiative will be successful. And I would also highly recommend evaluation, although some that knows me, I would say, not everything has to be measured right away, or not everything is measurable. There are different ways to measure impact, and even if we have to start something that's maybe not sexy, or maybe not you know, appealing to everyone, it is our role, if we believe in it, in order to make society better, you know, to start and stick with the idea, the mission, and the value, and let others join us when it's appealing to them, but not to give up on creating this triangle partnership. It is harder at times, but if the goal is bigger than each one of us, I think it's worth and meaningful to try. I pointed a few of the logos there to just um, share with you that they are partnerships that are successful, that we had the privilege to work with. So if it's Israel Unlimited, Transition, Equal Business, Ramp Up, and others that uh, are all around employment, and we truly, like all of you here, think that employment is a crucial tool to create inclusion um, and best practices. So I would like to you know, invite all of you to join, like today, the summit in November uh, in Boston that will take and continue the conversations that we learn from our partners here at the Assel Foundation. I mentioned earlier, and I would like to try to close with that, to say that program partnerships, innovation is extremely important. But aside to that, we're talking about the role of advocacy. And advocacy is, as I said before, sharing the story, learning best practices, understanding what is it to be proactive. It's not enough to sit and say, this is great, or hear people talking in not appropriate way and be silent, is to take an action to say what we have to say. So our foundation is extremely involved in advocacy, which is very rare in the world of family foundations. And advocacy for us means few things. So in addition to our programs on the ground, the foundation is involved in advocacy in raising awareness of disability inclusion. Hollywood is crucial in shaping attitudes of people with disability. So I want to share with you an announcement we made yesterday in recognizing uh, the MER Morton Ruderman Award in Inclusion to Academy Award winning actor Marley Matlin, which I hope uh, some of you can recognize.